Lassiter Show, starring the magnificent Lassiter. Featuring the nimble fingers of Michael Serio at the control board, the second most respected newsman, Don Richards, and the world's most dangerous traffic reporter, Gary McHenry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lassiter. Well, thank you there, Mr. Announcer. Seven and a half minutes after the hour of three o'clock. Welcome in. It is a Wednesday, May 31st, 1989. My, my goodness, how the time flies. Speaking of which, I was up until 2... Would you believe 2.30 this morning putting together a silly little three-page newsletter on that ridiculous, ridiculous desktop publishing program? My God, it is so much fun. That I bought. And I am in a bit of a, a quandary because I just finished my slurpee and my tongue. I mean, I was, I was really rushing it down because, you know, I can't sit here and kind of go... It just doesn't work. You know, it kind of takes away from the... From the, from the mystique of the show. And so my tongue is a little bit frozen, so, you know, if, I, if I'm lisping more than usual, that, that would be the reason for it. I'm here full of piss and vinegar this afternoon. I think it's time that you guys got full of it, too. I am sick and tired of limp-wristed shows, especially discussing issues like prayer in public and abortion, where people who have been on the face of this earth for 30 years try to tell you they haven't made up their minds on it yet. Well, I don't know. You know, I, my mother might be listening, and, you know, maybe she wouldn't approve of what I think. She got out of the business if that's what you're afraid of, but that's neither here nor there. Listening this morning, I heard one of the ancient old cop-outs from a caller. Well, you know, these people, they're really sincere, and, you know, they really think it's murder, and I, I don't know. I mean, if if. if if they really believe it's murder, shouldn't they do everything to stop it? Cop out into half because they don't believe it's murder. No, absolutely, positively not. The, the so-called pro-life people do not believe it's murder. It has nothing whatsoever to do with murder. It has nothing whatsoever to do with whether or not it's a little baby, unborn human being in there. No, it has to do with keeping women under somebody's heel. That's what it has to do with. And that's the only thing it has to do with. Because if these people really thought it was murder, are you, are you against murder? Are you opposed to murder? Are you opposed to human beings being killed? Innocent human beings being killed? Well, of course you're opposed to it. Virtually everybody is, except the people who kill them. You know, the Bundys, those kinds of characters. And as a human being yourself who is opposed to murder, would you be opposed stopping a murderer dead in his tracks from using any force whatsoever? I mean, if you saw somebody being murdered, wouldn't you pick up the nearest object and clobber the murderer over the head or, or stab him or shoot him or do something to stop him? I mean, you certainly wouldn't just trespass on his front lawn and hold up a sign saying, please stop murdering. No, no, if you thought that somebody was really being murdered, you'd do what you had to to stop them, not trespass. Well, you know, these people, they really believe it's murder. I mean, you know, shouldn't they do everything to stop it? Yeah, they should do everything to stop it if they thought it was murder. If abortion is murder, and if, a, if an abortionist is a murderer, why, there certainly isn't a court in the land that would hold you responsible if you were to take his life to prevent the murder or the continued murders. What is there? Of course not. Would you play along with me for a second or two? If I was to ask you a question, if I was to say, I think we can settle this matter once and for all. And if I were to ask you a question and say, did, did Jesus promise every human being salvation? You know, it's a, a lot of people like to use religion as a reason for being opposed to abortion. Did Jesus promise every human being salvation? Indeed, he did. Hallelujah, right? Are there any exceptions? Any exceptions whatsoever? Well, yes. Every human being is entitled to salvation so long as he or she asks for it. Because you must, to enter the kingdom of heaven, in order to be saved, you must be born again. You must say something to the effect of, you know, Jesus, come into my heart, uh, whatever. 
And if you don't say that, then you cannot be saved. According to the Bible, there are no exceptions. Are there any human beings that are excluded? Any human beings at all that are excluded from the plan for salvation? Well, not to the best of my light, no, to my knowledge, rather. But there are no exceptions. A human being can only be saved when a human being asks for salvation. So let's, let's let Jesus answer this question once and for all. I mean, can a dog be saved? No. Is it because Jesus has something against dogs? Well, no, but dogs can't read the Bible. Dogs can't ask for salvation, I suppose. I, I guess, you know, if you read the Bible, and if you could find a talking dog that said, Jesus, let me in, you know, I, I give you my life, I'm born again, then I guess the, the dog would be saved. Can birds be saved? I think not, again, for pretty much the same reason. Only human beings can be saved. And only human beings who request salvation. So therefore, if you cannot request salvation, according to the Bible, you must not be a human being. At least in the eyes of Jesus. So when that egg and that sperm joined together, couldn't possibly be human. Ten weeks later, it couldn't possibly be human. Technically, after birth, it couldn't really, by those standards, be human. So, I mean, who are you? Who am I? To judge when something is a human being. Because surely it's not a human being at conception, and surely it's not a human being several weeks later and several months later. At some point, it begins to resemble a human being. At some point, it begins to look like a human being. As a matter of fact, there's a local talk show host and caller who actually goes so far as to say, well, you know, immediately, as soon as the egg and the sperm are joined, it's a human being. And just because it doesn't look human doesn't mean it's not human I, or something to that effect. I guess that... This, this, this poor child is supposed to have a legally trained mind. I, I guess the problem is that uh, the person is confusing life, something that is alive, with something that is human. And something that is a human being. And lots of things are alive. You know, my gallbladder is theoretically alive. But it is not a human being. But it's alive. But it's not a human being. It contains various different traces of human flesh and human genes and probably, oh, DNA, and whatever the hell it is. But that doesn't make it a human being, does it? Something else I wanted to talk to you about today. Again, with a little bit of piss and a little bit of vinegar, because you guys just ain't had enough of it recently. I want to talk to you about that lousy, that miserable Supreme Court decision denying prayer before sporting events and things like that. I think that was an absolutely hideous decision on the part of the Supreme Court not to permit prayer before a football game or before anything as far as that goes. I'm rapidly changing my views here. I think that we should have prayer before everything. I think that we should constantly pray. I think that we should virtually turn the country over to the clergy. I enjoy seeing people make absolute fools of themselves standing there praying for victory at a football game. Like, you know, God sitting up there saying, well, you know, it could go either way, but, you know, I like, I like the sound of the, you know, the blue team's prayers better than the red team's. Or standing there praying for a safe game. I mean, here are a bunch of supposedly grown people banging their heads against each other's, risking life and limb, and saying, uh, uh, God, yo, God, uh, uh God, uh, could, could you let me get through this one without a sprained ankle or something, huh? Oh, I enjoy that. I think, I think it is absolutely the, the height of hypocrisy. And I'm very, very disappointed with the Supreme Court for trying their damnedest to stop this type of display. I think this type of display should go on everywhere at all times. 
I love to see people make absolute fools of themselves. I mean, I, you know, if the team loses, does that mean it was God's will? Do you think God really has a will as to whether or not the team wins or loses? Or, of course, it might have been the devil's work. And if somebody gets hurt, was that God's will or is that the devil's work? I mean, I think every event, maybe even this show, even, even this show too, should begin with prayer. Prayer, everywhere. Only then, perhaps, might people catch on that, quote-unquote, God does not sit around snapping to the orders of hypocritical, arrogant men and women. I think religion... And I think religious leaders should be brought into everything, into every phase of life. Because then and only then will you people begin to understand the, the intrusion and the danger. Only then will you start to catch on. Because otherwise, as long as we continue to fight it, all we're doing is prolonging the agony. I mean, I think we should have clergy at every video store so that they could check out and make sure that what you were taking home was fit viewing. I think we should have clergy in, in the legislature so that they could pass on the laws as to whether or not, you know, well, these, these laws are not consistent with the Bible or with what I think God wants. I think we should have clergy in the schools so they could pass on all the things that are taught to our children to make sure that they were okay with God. We should have them in the hospitals to make sure that medical treatment was in step with God. Hell, maybe we should even have them here in the control room at the radio station so they could make sure that what went out over the airways was in step with what God wanted. I mean, are, you, are, are you with me or against me on this one, huh? Prayer everywhere. Prayer all the time. Doesn't make any difference that it's kind of shallow and, and silly. And I think we should, we should, for example, pass laws where everybody had to pray before every meal. Oh, bless this food, God. Can you begin to imagine asking God to bless your food while somebody on the other side of the earth is starving for a lack of food? Can you begin to ask God to bless food that might, I don't know, contain cancer-causing agents? Is it possible that by asking God to bless your food, that will neutralize any, any unpleasant chemicals in the food? Let me give you the telephone numbers. 990-9352 in Hillsborough. Wouldn't it? Or before you got into a car. I mean, you know, if you're going to pray to God to protect you in a football game, well, wouldn't it make a great deal of sense? To ask God to protect you while you're driving your car where you could also get hurt? And wouldn't it make a great deal of... I mean, if you can compel people in the state of Florida to wear seatbelts for their own safety, then why couldn't you possibly compel people to pray for their own safety as well? I mean, I mean, we talk about your church, you know, separation of church and state. Well, you know, driving is not a right. Driving is a privilege. Now, if you want to drive in the state of Florida, then you have to have, you know, a car that's in, in reasonably good condition, and you have to have a driver's license and certified of the state that you can, you know, tell the difference between a stop sign and a yield sign and that you know how close to park to a, a fire hydrant and all of that kind of stuff. Well, if prayer works, and most of you would tell me that it does, and if driving is not a right but a privilege, then I think the state should require people to pray before they drive. I mean, can you imagine if every day, <clears throat> well, there, there's something like 150 million drivers in this country. I guess most of us get into the car four or five times a day. So that's a billion prayers. A billion prayers every day. If God's up there and a billion times a day, people say, uh, uh, God bless this trip, please. Uh, uh, this is Joe. Uh, check in with you tomorrow, God. Or however you want to pray. Why, my goodness, wouldn't you think that that would seriously cut down on traffic accidents? Of course you don't. But that's okay. You're just playing along here, aren't you? Or, or maybe we should request... If everybody had to pray before... Uh, uh, let's see, before they... Uh, uh, shaved in the morning. 
you know, so you wouldn't cut yourself up. Please, God, uh, uh, don't let me cut myself today. If, if you had to pray before everything, you know, before, you know, like, like, like maybe we would, maybe, maybe we should be required by the, I don't know, the FCC or somebody to pray before every show so that stupid callers don't get on. Then, then if, if stupid callers did get on, we, we could either say that it was either God's will or that the devil put them up to it. And, you know, we would no longer have to accept, accept blame ourselves for perhaps not having a good topic. Or perhaps not pre preparing it well, or or perhaps not presenting it well. Then and then, if you guys kind of messed up at work, you know, if you, if you had started the day every day with you know a public prayer at work, and you know the, the balance sheet still didn't balance, or or the the machine part was out of tolerance, or or you know you didn't make quota, then certainly wouldn't be your fault. It would be God's will, or the devil. Of course, unfortunately, if you did make your quota, then you'd probably have to split your commission with God. Or maybe not accept a bonus. Or, or how about praying before you go out to pick up foxes? Oh, God, please let me score with a foxes. Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Tampa. Hi, Tampa. It's Harry Carter. I don't care. Uh, you got something you want to say? I say I love my family. Oh. My Richard Carter. Uh huh. And James Carter. Uh huh. And they are in a mental hospital now. Oh. I'm in Saint. I'm in Tampa, and I'm going to go to work. Great. I tried for unemployment, but they won't put me on. Okay. Do you remember an Edward Buchanan? No. He called you, and I was there. Great. I'm your first caller. Uh-huh. I come from the island of Barbados in the West Indies. Oh, that's great. Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Good. I was just calling to say that the things that go on around life, I don't think it has anything to do with whether you pray or not. It's just going to happen to you either way. Well, most people say they believe in prayer. Don't you ever pray? I pray, but nothing ever happens. Well, why do you keep praying? I don't no more. Oh. See? Well, certainly some good things have happened in your life. Yeah, but not because I prayed for it. How can you be sure about that? Because I never prayed for it. Oh. Well, maybe... Maybe God was smart enough to know what you really should have had, and instead of giving you what you were praying for, he gave you those other good things. Nah. No. I don't think so. Neither do I, but I thought I'd ask anyway. <laughs> Take so, care. Yeah. Be good. Okay. 990 9352 in Hillsboro, 461 9352 in Pinellas. Long Boat Key. Hi there, Long. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello, Ted. My name is Gordon. Uh, uh, well, on the well, way home, uh, I was. George? Uh, well, I was George? Uh, uh, George, my name is Bob. Okay. Oh, it's. <laughs> Anyway, on the way home, uh, I was listening to your earlier uh, subject on uh, on the I didn't race. have an earlier subject. Pardon? I didn't have an earlier subject. Oh, okay. That was Ted Webb's show. I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of people get Ted and I mixed up. Yeah, I got the voice mixed up. Oh, well, all right. I'm sorry. I'll let somebody else on the line. Okay. okay. Bye-bye. Hey, he's going to let somebody else on the line. No, sir. I'm going to let somebody else on the line. 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 4619352 in Pinellas, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello. Hi. Bob, how you doing? Fine. Uh, I say if these people want to pray, let them pray. Uh, no, sir, I say people should be required to pray. Well, I kind of agree with you. The thing to me is that uh, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. I'm a first-time caller myself, but uh, I'm a confirmed Lutheran, and I've prayed in the past, and I just I don't get anything out of it myself. Uh I'm not so sure that I believe in God. Uh, I'm not scared to say that or anything. It's just that these people, they, they pray for their self-centered little problems, and they don't they seem not to concern themselves with the world at large. And to me, that's the thing that needs to be taken care of is worldwide problems and not, you know, whether they're going to get in a wreck on the way to work and stuff like that. So I basically agree with what you have to say. Well, I thank you very much. Thank you. Be good. Bye-bye. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro four six one 
9352 in Vanilla. So if you know you're, you're for me or if, if, if you're against me. So it doesn't really make much difference to me. I mean, if, if, if two or more of you would like to gather here on the, on the show and, and pray for my demise or something, I, I'd go along with that. It, it says right there in the book. It says right there in the book that, you know, if, if two or more of you gather and, you know, ask and it'll be bound in heaven and uh, bound, right? So, you know, it's right there in the book, and that should, that should probably get rid of me before 4 o'clock, wouldn't you think? Don Richard standing by at the WFLA News Desk. Uh, sit down, Don. What a bunch of pussy willows you people are. Here I am trying to help you. Trying to help you do what you say you believe in. And only so far, a relative hand... I mean, we should have, we should have literally... I, sh I would think we should have literally blown out the entire phone system in Tampa because if you guys really believe in this stuff, then, then what would possibly stop you from requiring it? I, I don't give me the separation of church and state crap. Hey, that's only part of a you know piece of paper that can be taken out any time. I mean, if that's your only problem, hey, no you know no no big deal, man. That can be repealed. No sweat on that. Well, that's not casting concrete. That's not chiseled in stone or or etched in steel. God, aren't they great cliches? But if you really and truly believed that prayer worked, if you really and truly believed that it's what God wanted, then I would think that you would go out of your way to have a society where. Prayer was mandated, or prayer was required, or prayer was at least seriously encouraged. Not this stuff about making your kids pray in school. Oh, God, gag me with a Bible on that one, huh? No, we're talking about serious prayer at your workplace, at your club, down there at the bowling alley. Before you get in the car, every time you get on a bus, every time you go to pay your taxes. Oh, God bless these taxes. Every time you turn around. If, if God answers prayer, and if you believe in prayer, other, otherwise, I guess, you know, you're just kind of, you know, kind of snorting for your nose there, you know, in the other direction or something, huh? St. Petersburg, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bobster. Hi. Ah! Oh, 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 did you hear that? He went, whoa! Oh, fantastic. 16 minutes out of that young child's life. You know, I think, you know, again, here's, here's another example. If we had prayer before every talk show... Maybe, you know, maybe that would have prevented that call. Venice, you're on there at 970 WFLA. Hey, Bob, how are you? Fine. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Anyhow, I'm a first-time caller, but on this prayer bit, I'd like to inject something. Uh, first of all, the Bible tells us that we should pray constantly, which is uh, if prayer is defined the way most of us define prayer, that's impossible. Then again, it tells us to go into a closet and pray. So if we're going to spend 24 well, hours people, a day... Well, there are a lot, of, a lot of people pray that they won't be discovered in the closet. <laughs> You're right. But, of course, now we have the walk-in closets where before we only had the little tiny ones. Well, sometimes they're even bend-over closets. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I know. But anyhow, we can't, we can't possibly spend 24 hours a day in a closet praying. So, therefore, it must mean that prayer means something else, which to me means... If we think good thoughts 24 hours a day, aren't we praying constantly in a closet? Well, I don't know what you mean by good thoughts. Well, uh, good is predominant over evil any time. Well, it, but, but good is relative there. I mean, for example, I might, uh, I might sit here while I'm talking to you thinking, geez, I hope Sophie isn't home wedding on the rug. You know, that, that would be a good thought. Wouldn't it? No, I don't. No. Would that be a good thought? You have to clean it up, not me. Well, it's, it's my rug, sir. Like I said, maybe yeah, it's good your rug. Here. That's right. It's your money paid for it too. But anyhow, I think, I think we we we're, we're misinterpreting uh, the word prayer. I think prayer means good thinking. I don't think it means uh, no, like to, to bow know. our heads well, and sir, cross our hearts. And sir, you want to cite the as a source? I think it's reasonable here in there that Jesus understood what quote-unquote prayer was as a matter of fact he even partook in prayer yes you know he, he you know it's, it's reasonably clear there he wasn't talking about thinking good thoughts no he was talking about raising your arms up or clasping them across your heart or, or yeah, whatever I don't, it might yeah, be I don't you think know that's part of formal words as a matter of fact speaking of formal words in the old testament we have god the father himself dictating a prayer to him right so yeah Yep. 
which unfortunately even, he even dictated, back then which even back then it was the good thought which unfortunately he dictated one way to the protestants and another way to the catholics and to this day both groups aren't quite sure how to end the prayer yeah and another one to the jews and another one to the muslims yes i understand that but i still i still say if the bible tells us to pray constantly that means that we should think well sir i'm not suggesting that we pray constantly just before I, every activity so just before the start of every activity. That's that's all. You don't think we could think good thoughts constantly? Well, sir, I, I should think. You know, it, it says right there in the Bible, uh, and and most people say that they believe the Bible. I should think if they really did and if they really believed in prayer, they they'd be trying, sir, to to have everybody pray. And all we have to do to you know get rid of this minor little problem with church and state is simply to have that amendment uh, to the Constitution repealed. No well, big deal. Yes. Of course, the Bible is probably. Sir, how the most... about how about if we pray on that? I think we should pray constantly. Thank you, sir. I pray I shall return. <laughs> Lethal is one way to describe him. Fearless is another. But that's his nature. He's not one to back down. One look. And you know he deserves respect. Plenty of it. You can sense the danger. You can see it in his eyes. That is, if you can see him at all. Because he's a master at the art of camouflage. The Mad Dog! Bob Lasseter! But it's after the hour of four o'clock. Welcome back, hour number two, the last day of the month of May, a Wednesday, the thirty first, nineteen hundred and eighty nine. Now, I have very strong, definite opinions, and I'm very proud and pleased with the fact that I have strong, definite opinions about an awful lot of things. Frankly, almost anything that you know, you give me a couple of seconds to think about, I can come up with an opinion on. And most other people, you know, they they really. They don't always have strong, definite opinions, and a lot of people holler at other people for having them like like me. You know, I take a lot of heat. People say, oh, geez, last you got an opinion on everything, you know? Well, holy moly, I would hope I would, but an opinion is just that. It's, I, I understand what an opinion is. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm right or I'm wrong. It's just the way I feel, and that in a lot of cases, I am willing to listen. I, I actually encourage a good argument in a position that is opposed to mine because it helps me to, to reevaluate myself. It also, frankly, sometimes helps me to reinforce my opinions. And I have some opinions on things like religion, God, prayer, etc., etc. I, I do not subscribe to the God of the Bible, because, you know, without going into any great detail, I just don't believe that there's a God who sends people out to rape and plunder and pillage. And I don't really, you know, believe that there's a mean God and a stingy God and a... And a jealous God. And, you know, I, I, I just, you know, it's, it's not my thing, so I, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. And I sure as hell don't subscribe to organized religion, but subscribe to any type of organization. And I, I don't subscribe to, well, things like prayer, you know, asking God for a better job or, you know, come on, not when there's still cancer and AIDS. And so I, I, I don't believe as other people do in those things. However, I don't know for sure that there isn't a God who, you know, sent people out to rape and plunder and pillage and bring home the virgins. I don't know for sure that there isn't. I suspect that there isn't. And I don't know for sure that he doesn't actually favor some kind of ridiculous organized religion, you know, where they wear a lot of silly hats or, or, or dance around in the middle of the floor, you know. I don't know what he wants. And I don't know for sure that he doesn't answer prayer. But almost everybody else in this country, without exception, at least when they're talking to you, tell you that they do believe in the Bible, that they do believe in God, that they do believe in religion, and that they do believe in prayer. And virtually without exception, they will say that these are not debatable points. Well, I should think that if you really did believe in those things, then you would want your nation, yourself, your family to spend virtually its entire 
day in worship and praise and prayer. If God listens to prayer, then pray to him. But don't pray for these silly things. Oh, God, I hope the store is still open by the time I get there. No, no, no. Pray for things that matter. Oh, God, I hope we turn a profit today. Exactly. Precisely. Start every day at work with a prayer. All you guys want to do is make some poor little innocent kids that are more interested in thinking about baseball and, 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 and girls and, and boys. Make them pray. Make them start their day with prayer. No, 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 no. Start your day with prayer. Require it clear across the board. End your day with prayer. Begin the middle of your day with prayer. Pray, pray over food. Pray over bowling. Pray over everything. If it makes sense to pray before the beginning of a football game, then it makes sense to pray before the beginning of anything. If it makes sense to pray for a safe football game without any injuries, then it makes sense to pray for a safe day without any injuries. Doesn't it? I mean, like, at a construction site, very, very high incidence of injury and... In Clear water, hi, Clear. You're on there at 970 WFLA. Hello? Yes, hello. <laughs> I am really surprised to hear someone like you. Ooh. I really didn't call for an argument, but I just called to make a few statements, okay? Uh-huh. I called to say that... Did you ask God, by the way, for, you know, the, that you'd be able to get away without an argument? Did you pray for, pray for that? Will you just shut up and let me say what I'm going to say? <laughs> Shut up. Oh, okay. Um, the thing of it is, is, you know, you were saying about praying before everything. Um, uh -huh. As a matter of fact, I do think that we should pray before all things. A lot of people... Did you pray before you made the call? Uh, silently, yes, I did. Uh -huh. I prayed God to give me strength to get through this conversation. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the thing of it is, is that you're saying we should pray before everything, every little thing. A lot of people who yeah. don't know the Lord cannot pray because they don't know this fellowship. No, to hell with them. Excuse me? To hell with them. I mean, you know, just w wouldn't, you re re wouldn't you go along with me that people should be required to pray? No, they pray because they want to. Oh, that's a bunch of bunk. No, no, people should be required to pray. If prayer works, I mean, can you imagine how much money we could save? If, for example, we could, we could ask God not to injure construction workers, or we could ask God not to let girls get pregnant before they're married, or you know, we could save tremendous amounts of money, which, of course, could you know, then be used to partially to do the Lord's, Lord's work and things like that. So I think people should be required to pray. Well, let me say something. Of course, you don't believe in prayer, do you? Uh, yes, I do, but well, you God, can't pray because lady, you don't believe in lady, God. If you believed in prayer, then you'd want all of these things I'm asking for. But you can't pray because you don't believe in now, God. Late, lady, now you're trying to insult me. No, I think you're a very you're rude and obnoxious oh, now person. You're rude and obnoxious. And I feel sorry for you, but I am and going to pray no for you. For well, hey, lady, you didn't, your prayers didn't do any good getting you on the show, did they? Because your prayers don't work, lady. And the reason you don't want to require everybody else to pray is because you know that their prayers don't work either. But you're just too obstinate to admit it. And then, of course, showing what a great Christian you are, you attempt to insult me. You attempt to call me names. And now you're praying that I'll go to hell and rot in the lake of fire. You're not praying for my salvation, madam. You're not praying that I see the light. You're praying that I be punished. You're praying that I lose my job. You're praying that the devil come down and, and bite my... My wang dang doodle off or something like that. That's what you're praying for, madam. I pray that Gary McHenry's ready. Yes, a man more close to the heavens than... Hi, Bob. Bob, uh, I am. Uh, hi, Gar. I, I feel sorry for you, too, Bob. What, what's the problem, Gar? Uh, I just figured I'd throw in my sorrow. Everybody else feels sorry for uh, you. Yeah, Gary, Gary, I, I think your sorrow is a little different than most people's uh, sorrow. Uh, <laughs> that's mo that's most probably true. So, most people don't have, you know, the, the sex box. <laughs> yes, yeah, sex The fox <laughs> fetching problems. be uh, careful there. Yes, I really should. The uh, fox fetching <laughs> problems uh, and sorrow that, that you have. In the dictionary under sorrow, they have I, my picture. I, you, know, yeah. you, know, you know, Gary, I really am glad I decided to call them foxes instead of ducks. <laughs> 
Yes, me too, Bob. I've enjoyed the job. Traffic along Hillsborough Avenue, all messed up at Benjamin Road. That's going to be the headache. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello, Bobster? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's twice he did it. Oh, my God. Twice in one day, he called up and said, hello, Bobster. Whoa. Boy, oh, boy. What what a what a fantastic, that, that young man is really off to a fantastic quick start on life. He has twice now called the Bob Lasseter Show and go, Hello, Bobster. Whoa! It probably has some very, very special meaning to a bunch of very insignificant people that he hangs around with. Sarasota, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi, Sarah. I'm not going to go. Woo! Okay, oh. well, I just did, but I won't yeah. do it again. Well, c come on, let's, let's both do it. Okay, what? ready? Whoa! Woo! Ooh. Ooh, that was fun. Oh, wasn't it gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Where I shouldn't uh, have them. Great, great show today. Uh, pure radio genius. Let's see. Uh, uh, I think I can take care of this prayer situation in, in one big step. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, here we go. Dear Lord, um, this is a, just one prayer, but it's a big one, so please listen up real close. Oh, okay. Please, 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 we beseech thee, watch over everybody, everywhere, and everything they do, all the time, forever. Amen. There, now we're all taken care of. Whoa. Yeah, I know. I huh? wonder why nobody ever... I, You know, I've never heard that prayer prayed before. I wonder why no one ever... Billions yeah. upon billions of people over thousands upon thousands of years, and I never heard anybody pray, pray that prayer before. Yeah, now I've taken care of everybody in the whole world forever. Whoa, I guess guy can retire now. Yeah. He can, uh, he, well, I don't know what he's going to do now. Yeah. Yeah. Son of a gun. Oh, well. Well, uh. Well, let's sit back and see if it works. Yeah. Have a good afternoon, Bob. You too. Goodbye. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro four six one nine three five two in the other place. Largo, hi Larg, you're on the air at nine seventy WFLA. Yeah, hi, is that uh, Bob? Yep. Yeah, I, I was just calling on the um, uh, the matter of the abortion. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I always find it so strange why you fellows believe that it's not a human life that's being taken there. Well, I think I've discussed that a number of times. If you, if you'd like. I'd be delighted to put you on hold and discuss it with you, particularly one-on-one, -on -one, up close and personal after the news, okay? All right. All right, on hold he goes. Can't begin to imagine why he hasn't heard anything that's been said. He listens constantly. Don Richard standing by the WFLA news desk with a handful of WFLA news. Oh, you're still there. Yeah, I'm still here, Bob. Okay, now, what was it that you wanted to know again? Well, I just find it strange to believe in this day and age of science and uh, technology and all that and uh, premature babies. Mm -hmm. That you can actually say that uh, you know a child that's in the womb is not a human being, even well, though. Well, give me one human characteristic. Well, let's say, for instance, a woman that's five months or six months pregnant has Doesn't a premature different. baby. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a human being. I mean, the child stays in an incub incubator. The child that has pain. Give me pride. one human characteristic that that child, five or six months old, in the incub incubator has. It's like any other baby. Yeah, it, you know, no, no, it, no. It, I didn't ask it, if it's like any other baby. I said, give me one human characteristic. It moves around. It well, makes so does a sound. Wound, sir. It, it breathes oh, like uh, any baby, which is, which well, is born sir, here sir, nine sir, months. Sir, sir, they're not human characteristics. They're characteristics of animals. Well, human beings and animals, in that sense, are pretty similar. Well, right. So, so give me yeah, one human characteristic that the child has. I've already told you. The same as a no, newborn sir, you baby. Gave, you, sir, you gave me the characteristics of a worm. But uh, how about a newborn baby? What characteristics does a newborn baby have? Uh, sir, how about if we let Jesus settle this? Who can go to heaven, sir? What do you say? Who can go to heaven? Let's let Jesus uh, Anybody that obeys the Lord can go to heaven. Anybody that obeys... You must obey the Lord before you can go to heaven. Yes, definitely. You must be born again before you can go to heaven. Is that not what Jesus said? Definitely, yeah. Well, then, sir, I, I suggest to you that the baby can't be born again. Well, listen, I mean... You, because, sir... Every because, person... Sir, 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 excuse me, I was in the middle of a sentence. No, but you... Uh, sir, I... Are you trying to me saying what sir, I'm going to say or sir, what do you want to say? Sir, 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 sir. I would suggest to you that the baby can ask Jesus to be saved, correct? The baby already has Jesus, right? Right there with, with no, the child. No, no, sir. I'm sorry. The Every baby has to be born again. Jesus. No, I'm sorry, sir. The baby has to be born again. But what do you understand That's what it by says being in the born Bible, again? Sir. That's what it says in the book, right? But what do you, have you understand ever read by the book, being born sir? again? Sir, have you ever read the book? What do you understand by being born again? Sir, have you ever read the book? I've read parts of it. What do you understand yes, I know by being born parts again? Of it, sir. Why are you trying to answer my question? What do you understand by being born again? Sir, I've read the book. That doesn't, that doesn't I, mean I know, you understand I know, what sir, being sir, born again According to the book, you cannot have salvation unless 
you accept Jesus into your heart. Okay, but I you contend... Cannot, sir, you cannot, sir, accept Jesus into your heart unless... I contend that every Shut little up. baby has Jesus Shut in up. their heart. Why are you so frightened of a man answering you? Sir. You're so frightened. Are you frightened of my argument that too powerful for you? What are you frightened of? Sir, I'm not... Sir, to tell you how unfrightened you're I am You're very frightened. You. You're a frightened man. You're no, frightened when a guy sir. gives you a good argument sir. you can't answer it. Sir, I'm so unfrightened Every you. baby I'm going has to hold the Lord over. in their heart. Every single baby. Sir, now you're going... And it's only sir. when you get bigger and you start to disobey the Lord that, that, you, that you become... Oh, you sir. Fall, you fall into the state of Adam. Sir, I'm going to hold you over into the next segment. I'm not afraid of you. Yes, you were frightened because you always no, shut me up. Sir. And you don't let no, me sir, finish No, sir, I shut you up because you're say. obnoxious, not because I fear you. Look, I you shut you up, whatever sir, name you, you want go to on and on and on and on with the same meaning. You cannot save my soul. You can't even save your own. Well, sir, would you like to stay on into the next segment with me? If you want to, I'm not going to do that. And, sir, we're going to have a conversation. You're not going to lecture. Let's make that real clear. Speaking of people who lecture... And sir, people, sir, people who definitely need salvation. Sir, the sir. one, the only, Fox <laughs> best friend of ours, Gary McHenry, with another airborne WFLA dangerous traffic report. Thank you, On ever. Washboard. Oh, ever so much. A my, stomach. my good friend, Bubba. Traffic along Hillsboro Avenue, the big problem spot this afternoon, both east and westbound at Hillsboro and Benjamin Roads. Uh, you're going to find the westbound traffic. From Bartow Ford, then from all other six Ford dealers in Polk County combined. We're conveniently located at Highway 98 and the 60 Bypass in Bartow. News Radio 970 WFLA. Times could be tough, you know what I mean? Sometimes things can really be hard. You've been working for a very long time, working very hard to keep your credit in good standing, and because of some unfortunate set of circumstances, something you couldn't reasonably anticipate, you'll find yourself having very serious financial problems now. Maybe your credit standing that you've worked so hard for seems to be going right down the tubes, and if you don't do something about it pretty damned quick, it's going to get even worse. Maybe I've got a solution for you. Town & Country Mortgage and Investment Corporation. Town & Country Mortgage and Investment Corporation, they really care, and they honestly care about helping you. And they honestly want to help in resolving your financial problems so that you, like many others, can keep coming back whenever you want to borrow again against the equity in your real estate, the real estate that you own for any worthwhile purpose. And they emphasize worthwhile purpose. They're not looking to put you in hock. Hey, look, that's the first step up to you. You can destroy in a relatively short time what it took you so long to build up, or maybe you can salvage it yet. Give them a call at 264-2648-264-2648. Town & Country Mortgage and Investment, 14502 Northdale Mabry, licensed mortgage brokers. Give them a call. You'll be glad you did. Off it is again to the telephones, this time Largo again. Hi there. L Largo, you still there? I'm still here, Bob. Okay, Larg, let's, let's see again if we can't just settle this relatively quickly and easily. We'll let Jesus settle it. Uh, uh, you, you've, got to, you've got to be baptized in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, correct? Yes. And only human beings can enter the kingdom of heaven, correct? No, there are I mean, angels You can't there. baptize a dog, can you? I know there are angels there, and angels are not... Uh, well, well but yeah, but, but they're not earthly creatures. Uh, are those people on the earth? Yeah. You know, you can, only, you can only baptize human beings. You can't baptize a parrot. No, I, you can't I didn't baptize a, to, uh, you can't baptize a gallbladder. Nope. Mm -hmm. You can't baptize something that's not human. Okay. And Jesus said you can only baptize human beings. Yeah. Well, Jesus said you know nothing about baptizing fetuses, did he? Glad to settle that one for you. Thank you, Jesus. Off we go to old Tampa. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi. Hi. Oh, okay, good. I'm through. This is uh, Harold in Tampa. Uh -huh. I just had to call you through because I just was listening to you on the radio. Well, that's probably the best place to listen to me. I'm <laughs> yeah. normally on every afternoon between 3 and 6, Monday Yeah, I've been listening every week. Every day, too. Mm. All right. Uh, boy, I can barely hear you. Uh, that's because I'm not talking. <laughs> well, it's I'm on a pay phone, too. Uh, your question today was about prayer before everything we do. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it, it, it brings up an interesting thought since my job is driving around and uh, I get my van about a good 20, 30 times a day. I would never get anywhere. Well, it doesn't have to be a long prayer, does it? I, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but you, you see, know, if, if you really I, believed in prayer, then you would you would consider praying before every time you got in your van. Well, 
And you bring up t- this touchy subject there, because I, you know, I believe in prayer, and I'm hearing what you're saying, everybody else, about, you know, digging into them about, oh, well, you believe in prayer, stuff like that. Hey, if you think this is a touchy subject, tomorrow we have a urologist on. Ooh, that's fun. Anyway, uh, what I would think is, is prayer comes true, but only as God sees it. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, I don't. What do you mean by that? <laughs> uh, what, like, you pray for your dog not to die or whatever. If the dog wants the dog to die, it's going to die. So, in other words, it would be stupid huh? to pray then. Then it would be foolish to pray. Well, Because, in other, in other words, what you'd be asking God to do would be to change his mind. Yeah, well, um, I guess it gives uh, the, the chance of us earthly creatures to uh, get him to say before he does what he does. So, in other words, it's an absolute, hopelessly foolish pastime. Well, I would hope he listens some. Well, no, wait a second. I thought God had a perfect plan. <laughs> well, I, I'm not, so I'm not other one other words, to question in, him. in other words, for people who say that God has the perfect plan, they're really insulting God by asking him to change his plan. Uh, that, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's what they like to say, yeah. Hmm. Well, I, you know, I, I... I don't know. I wouldn't want to insult a God that, you know, send people uh, <laughs> yeah, to, to like thunder and loot yeah. and turn people into pillars of stone and, or was that salt? Uh, I, yeah, he was whoa. kind of in his old day, huh? I don't know that I want to take any chances with that God. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I don't know. As I... That's why I said it's kind of touchy with me, because I, you know, I read a lot of Old Testament, read a lot of New Testament. I have my belief, but yet I see contradictory everywhere. Well, we weren't talking about whether or not there are contradictions of the Bible so much as to whether or not, you know, people should be required to pray. If prayer works, then people should be required to pray. Well, the well, thing is, like, you know, you're saying pass the law to do it, right? Well, why not? Well, see, I have this, this whole thing of I don't like these little laws, like... Fasting my seatbelts, uh, that shouldn't care about myself. Whoa, whoa, you know, whoa, uh, whoa. We're not talking about fastening seatbelts. Well, I, I mean, and we're also... Talking, we're, you know, we're talking about God here. Yeah, well, I mean, you're talking about God. Well, I, I mean, don't you, like you the said, idea of someone you, you, from you, government you, tell me what I can and can't do. It's not somebody from government, sir. It's, it's just government helping you do what you should do. I mean, I understand if it's going to be something like utter chaos, but... Well, thank you, my friend. All right. Be good. One line available. It is in, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, the place with the big buildings. 9909352. 990WFLA. Don Richards, speaking of big buildings, standing so much. I don't think that if we brought members from our own sales staff up to the production room and faked a spot for me, uh, you know, with people pretending to be, you know, in love with me, common people on the street, that we could do any better than that. I am just green with envy. Uh, Plant City Plants are on the air at 970 WFLA. I agree with you, Bob. Well, uh, thank go- you, sir. <laughs> Going back to the issue, let's say, let's start out with the prayer issue. I think that's a, uh, a choice that someone has to make for themselves. I don't, I don't think that somebody getting up there and saying a prayer, say, for instance, in this newest ruling at the ball games, is actually going to change anything because what was it written that if you're, you're gathered in my name? Well, actually, they're not gathered in the name. And uh, maybe the, that's actually maybe nullifying it. I believe on prayer on a personal level may be silent. Uh, I'm a very religious person, I might say. I, I believe in God, whatever his name may be. I believe in the Jesus concept. And uh, let's well, see. No, no, wait a second. Here. Okay. Please, uh, without my being facetious or, or smart aleck or anything else, if you truly believe, and I would have all the respect in the world for you. You know, it's not going to change my opinion of you if you believe or you don't believe, because that's not how I, I base my opinions. Okay. If you truly believed that prayer and God were, were very real elements, it seems to me that you would want to do everything in your power to encourage people to beseech God to make this a better place to live, to make it a safer place, a happier place, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Certainly, but I believe that all starts at the grassroots levels with uh, whatever I do, my actions. Uh, and I'm not quite sure if the most evil of people pray that they're not going to die in the electric chair when they're sentenced the next day. That's not going to change, you know, uh, per se, what they're going to do. Now, wait, I, did it ever dawn on you that God has said he will forgive that, that evil person about to die oh, in the electric chair and all the person? Absolutely. Says, God forgive me? Absolutely. But God never restores the people that were sinned against? I'm sure he has. No, sir, I, I beg your pardon. If somebody's about to die in the electric chair for killing someone, they, they can be forgiven and be with God that very day in heaven, but God never restores the person that was sinned against. He'd never restore them again? Well, no, they're not going to be brought back to life. Okay, well, it is, I've studied some of uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe that. I mean, one particular people do. They do believe that uh, no matter what you've done, 
Of course, they believe in a different concept that the Earth is going to be brought back in... Uh, well, actually, just, all, just like all these aborted babies are going to be Christians back someday. All Christians believe that there is but one unforgivable sin, blasphemy. That every other sin can be forgiven simply by saying, oh, God, I'm sorry. Right, right. I agree but, with you. But God is such a great guy, he forgives, he forgives sinners, but he doesn't restore those people who are sinned against. But if I steal your lawnmower, right. I have committed a sin, I can go home tonight, still with your lawnmower, and say, oh, God, please forgive me, and God will say, well, okay, Lassiter, but he ain't going to give you your lawnmower back. Right. Well, that's... That and we all stand around and praise God for being so merciful. You're still without your lawnmower. Exactly. I, I agree with you. So I was just speaking from a personal level as far as about the prayer subject, and I believe it, it, it works to a certain extent. For instance, back in the wartime when they, they prayed the... Uh, Protestant leaders and Catholic leaders. I'm not picking any religion. Mm -hmm. I'm just from from my observations. They prayed mm -hmm. each side now uh, to go and kill the people. Right. Well, it worked. I mean, they went and killed each other. And yet they were brothers. So, on that respect, I mean. Well, uh, no, I beg your pardon, sir. A lot of people say God answered prayer because you know America was victorious after what 30, 40, 50 million deaths. Sure. God, God answered the prayers. Right. <laughs> Thank God, only 40 million people died. <laughs> It yeah, makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, sometimes? Thank you very much, my friend. All righty. And uh, on the abortion? Yeah. Well, I, there again, I, I feel... Got that, about 10 seconds. Okay, I don't think that uh, a man on the Supreme Court should rule on the decision. I think that should be maybe some women to get together, maybe vote on it or something. Get their opinion. They're the ones that they have to deal with it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Buck. Be good. Two lines open, the practical joke line and one in Hillsborough. One more hour, yes, go. Don't venture very far. Send him back to the lake. Lake, oh God, in your name today. I know you God by yourself, you hear the answers prayer. Oh God, you set high, you look low, you see all things. Set a blessing in this man's show. Put a blessing in his show. Oh, God, in his business. Touch his mind, body, and soul. Give him strength. Oh, God, you said as your day, so shall your strength be. Bless him in his business. Oh, God, in your name today. Touch his mind, body, and soul. Bless him spiritual. Bless him financial. Oh, God, in your name today. Bless him now in Jesus' name. Amen. Bob Lassiter, News Radio 970, WFLA. You know, Michael, I'm sitting here. You were there that night. Um... That, uh, by the way, for the benefit of those of you listening, was Master Daniel. Uh, one night when we worked over at the other station, uh, we, we were having a particularly miserable time on the phones. A lot of, a lot of really weird callers. And, uh, and so we got a hold of one of those tabloids, one of those weekly tabloids, and we read through it and uh, started calling various different people that offered you know, to pray for, to drive out demons. We, we thought that perhaps the phone was demon-possessed, and we finally got a hold of Master Daniel, and he agreed, you know, just for the right to give out his uh, P.O. box uh, on, on the air to, uh, to pray for us, to, to make a special prayer. And, uh, you know, Michael, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, Master Daniel asked for two things. Uh, in the prayer, he asked basically that, you know, the show become successful. And we got, you know, mega ratings over there and came over here for the big bucks. And during, I thought that the flaw in the prayer, you see, and you, you, you just wait, you're going, to be, you're going to be stunned. I thought the flaw in the prayer was that Master Daniel asked that our, our enemies be driven back into the lake. Because Master Daniel lived in Chicago. And so, you know, I'm sitting here going, ha, 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 ha. Oh, this proves that Master Daniel's prayer doesn't work because there isn't any big lake around here. Now, if he had said the gulf. But, Michael, think about it. Who were our enemies? And he went back to Cleveland, right next to the lake, Yogi. Whoa, that's scary. We got successful, and Yogi went back to Cleveland. Uh, okay, St. Petersburg. Hi, St. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, uh, Bob. Yeah. yeah it's that's... very good to talk to you. Mm. I think um, having a person like you is good for people, you know. You well, make people that? think. Well, thank you. Especially um, religious people, we tend to believe only and put our brains in park, you know. But um, coming to the issues that you raise, well, I pray for you. I have prayed for 
you know, in order to get down to the show. Well, you know, that, that's an incredible thing. It. Here we live in a world with cancer, and you're ba wasting your time praying for me. Uh, well, there are, we have the battle has to go on on all fronts, you know. Yeah. And um, I think we deal with God as individuals. And so what he gives me the impulse to pray for, he'll give you a different impulse, wait, wait you know. Second. You said the battle has to be fought on all fronts? Yes. Uh, you, you consider me to be an enemy? No, 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 no. Oh. Look, on the contrary, Satan is the enemy. And oh. he tries to use us, you know. Through me? Hello? Through, through me? No, no. Um, not necessarily you. He, you, he tries Sir. to use me also. He, he tries to use whoever he uh, will allow him. What I'm saying is that uh, God... By the way, have you ever seen Satan? Hello? Have you ever seen Satan? No, but I've seen him at work. Have you ever smelled him? No, but I've seen him at work. Have I've you ever touched him? No, but I've seen him at work. I haven't seen the wind. But you, you but have, I see its effects. Yeah, but but I, I beg your pardon. You can feel the the effects. I mean, it actually can be measured. Have you ever measured Satan? Yes. You have um, measured Satan. Yes, in a sense. In I a sense, um, but, but not not effect. literally. Hello. You have not literally measured Satan. In other words, you, um, not with a ruler. In no. other words, your knowledge of Satan is very similar to your knowledge of God. You just have to, you know, exactly right. You just have to basically accept both in faith. Yes. Yes. But you that's not where it stops. You see, it's not much different from anything else in life. Um, to sit on the, in this chair, I have to have faith that it will hold me up. To go up in an airplane, well, I have sir, to have faith that it will stay up there. I have faith in the pilot that he's properly well, trained well, and well, so sir, on. Uh, sir, I, I don't think having faith in the pilot is quite the same thing as having faith in Satan. Um, I mean, when know, I say I, I have faith, faith in faith. Satan, be I careful of your well, words. Now, no, no, wait a second here, sir. You see, if, okay. I go, if I go into an airplane, I have faith. I, I quite agree with you that the man flying the plane knows how to fly it. Exactly. That he has been well trained. Yes. That he is skilled. And I must believe that, that he's there too. He is tested. there in that cockpit, although and I that can't he's see him. Experienced, and that he's there in the cockpit. You're right, sir. Good. But <laughs> I have a major problem uh -huh. with accepting the devil along the same way. I mean, in essence, what you're saying to me is I have faith that the devil is evil. I have faith that the devil is going to do wrong. I have faith that the devil is experienced in wrongdoing. That to me, sir. Yes, uh, but I have good reason for doing that, you see. Sure, because I know you've got good reasons, sir. You've got to have a devil. Um, no, no, not like that. Not like that. Hold on. Um, the Bible is what um, tells me about Satan through the mouth of, mouth of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the most credible witness that I um, can think of in history. Well, sir, I, I, I don't think so. You know, because, you see, sir, this is where that, I know what story you're talking about, and this is where it doesn't really make any sense. If the devil were to come into the room this afternoon, what is the first thing that you would do? Um, you pray would, to the Lord, who you would, is in the room with me also. If you were following the Bible, sir, you would invoke the name of Jesus Christ, and you would say things like, Out, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, maybe. And you might even hold up a crucifix or a picture of the Lord, right? Maybe. Well, not maybe, sir. That's in essence what you would have been told to do. No, and no, no. You, you don't know me. You can't say that. Sir, You're putting words in my mouth. No, if no, you want no, to give me a no, chance sir, to express I'm, myself, no, sir, please I'm, do I'm, so. Sir, I'm not putting words in your mouth. I'm taking words from the Bible. And, sir, this is what you would do to get rid of the devil. The crucifix because, is not in the Bible, you know, we have, been, we have been told that the devil can't even stand the well, name of Jesus Christ. The crucifix is not in the Bible. You say you're putting from the Bible, but you're sir, not. Sir, if you give me a sir, chance, I would express sir, myself. Sir, we have been told that the devil can't even stand the name of Jesus Christ. Quite so. Well, then, sir, how could the devil have tempted Jesus Christ? How could the devil have been in the same room with him? How could the devil have transported him to the top of the mountain and to the top of the temple? Yes, that's why he left rather hurriedly, you see. Sir, because uh, Jesus sir, Christ resisted him using the same scriptures uh, that I'm no, telling no, you no, is my no, authority. Sir, 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 you're missing the point. Uh -huh. The devil couldn't have possibly tempted Jesus Christ. Why not? Because the devil can't even stand the name, let alone to be in the same room, to touch, to be talking to. Uh, but you can try. Sir. You have to give Satan credit for sir, trying, sir, you know. Sir, 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 it would be impossible. Why? If you can drive Satan out simply by invoking the name of Jesus Christ, yes. then Satan couldn't have possibly tempted Jesus because he would have had to be there. Yeah, he would have had to look at him not, face to face. He would no, have had no, to talk wait, to wait, him, wait, sir. It's not other than rubbing his magic lamp, you know. It's a fight. You know, like a wrestling match. And uh, the stronger man wins, but they sir, have to grapple. Together. Sir, sir, no, that, that's impossible. Because, uh -huh. you see, Jesus is all good and Satan is all bad. And we have been told, sir, 
that Satan couldn't possibly be around something that was all good. Okay, I, I heard your point, but you're not giving much chance to make mine. And I want to say something about the abortion issue also. Oh, really? You hadn't mentioned that. Um, yeah. You, you were the one that started talking about prayer. You didn't say anything about abortion when you called. Oh, um, yeah, you about something about it, please. I can give you about a half a minute, and that's it. Okay, um, I have a little baby. She was born at, um, seven months. Um, and so, uh, for those two months that we had her... Sir, I'm not kidding about the 30 seconds. She, um, was, is a person. The only difference is that she's outside of the womb. So that shows that, um, no, if sir, we had sir, killed her, sir, then we would have been, um, uh, committing sir, murder because, sir. um, she's a person. Uh, sir, no, I'm sorry. She couldn't have existed outside of the womb before she was, uh, born. Well, um, she came out of the womb two months before she was due. Well, sir, maybe she did, but that still has, you know, what, what does that say? That says that um, if I had killed her, if she had not come out of the womb and I had killed her, uh -huh. I would have been committing murder. Oh. And um, that it is condoned across the nation is uh -huh. really sick. Is um, a nation killing babies. A nation it's killing backward. babies that don't it's exist. Dark. A nation killing babies that don't exist. Hello? Uh, I said a nation killing babies that don't exist. But they do exist. You asked the person previously, uh, sir, you sir, compared a sir, baby to a worm. Uh, Two sir, human beings sir. don't have a worm. Uh, Two sir. human beings have a baby. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, there's something like 2% of the abortions in this country take place after the fifth month. And speaking of after the fifth month, Gary McHenry <laughs> with a, uh, a bronze uh, report not on, a, a on washboards. Uh, uh, with a lot of uh, traffic in it, and they're from up in the air where it's dangerous. A monstrous backup today. Oh, I love it. A monstrous mess. A nightmare of traffic. He's finally catching on, Mikey. Yeah, boy, it's, uh, it's, it's hell. With billowing fumes of, uh, yeah, billowing uh, fumes of, uh, uh fumes. Uh, exhaust fumes. Yeah. Yeah. Traffic. <laughs> <laughs> People passing out from all the fumes. And you can only hear about it at News Radio 970 WFLI because the other stations don't have that fall to report it. That's right. <clears throat> what? I think I hurt myself. Traffic along Hillsborough Avenue at Benjamin Road. The reason for all of the mess. Trying to get into town. Considered. Dunedin, Dunn, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello? Uh, yes, hello there, Dunn. This is Grace. <clears throat> well, you see, we, we don't use... Names oh, are on all the right, show. sorry. We, we just okay. using you know, a little little clippets of the towns. Uh, I wasn't like, sure if I was on. Like PD <laughs> for St. Petersburg, done for Dunedin, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I've just finished writing a book that uh, makes your prayers work about 90% of the time. Uh, I'd like to uh, send it to you. I don't believe in prayer, ma'am. Uh, well, this isn't exactly what you would call prayer. Mm -hmm. It's done when you're asleep with a tape recorder. And uh, I have mean, testimonials in the back. You, you mean, for example, you, you record things on there like, you know, please, God, cure cancer. You put it on a tape recorder and go to sleep? It won't work that way. Uh -huh. uh, you don't say please. You say I am now cured of the cancer. No, I wasn't referring to your own cancer. I was you now cancer in general. Uh, in general. See, well, see, you, if, I, if, I thought, if I thought that God would cure cancer, I wouldn't pray for the cure of my own cancer. I would pray for the cure of cancer, period. See, if I, if I truly believed that God answered prayer and I had cancer, uh -huh. you see, I would... The way I think is I would say, well, well, holy moly here, so to speak. I have if, if, if God can cure cancer, period, then they can cure mine as well as all of the others. So I wouldn't ask just that God cure mine. I would ask for a cure for cancer, period. You have to have at least ten people to do anything work like that. Oh, well, uh -huh. you know, well, I, you know, I would think there would be a piece of cake also, to get ten a... people together to say, hey, let's cure cancer and pray for it. Wouldn't I've you? done some work in the weather, too. On the, the weather? But there is a treatment uh, that was done for a woman with cancer. Uh, have, have you, you know, prayed for an end of the drought? I certainly did. Well, and uh, that must have been one of the 10% that steadily, didn't work. Steadily. So I'm saying that must have been part of the 10% of the time that it doesn't work. That's possible, but it did rain yesterday and the day before. Yeah, it's not exactly an end of the drought, ma'am. No, I know I you know, realize that. It's I'm, just I'm... a period of high humidity that passed by with some, you know, thunder. Uh-huh. Well, may I send it to you? Sure. Good. Sure, I get all kinds of... Then later I'll call you back up. Whoa, you know, don't threaten me now. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't do that. Okay. okay. Take care now. See, I'm not a Bible believer. Okay, that's good. Like you. Can I tell you something? Uh, if you can do it quickly. Quick, yeah. yeah. Okay, there's a man named Zachariah 
Sitchkin, and he's written three books predating the uh, deluge, and um, he's got an awfully good explanation on how mankind evolved. So maybe you might want to read them. Okay. I'll include that uh, the names of the books with the book. I'll look forward to it. Thank you. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye-bye. <clears throat> <clears throat> hey, our policy has been always to put the wacky ones first. Oh, uh, there is uh, there's one line available. What do you mean wacky? I just was clearing my throat. You know, don't don't be so you know so judgmental in there on the other side of the glass, Mike. I'd give her I'd give her a seven. Nine at least. Uh, one line available in Hillsboro. That's the one with the big tall buildings. Nine nine zero nine three five two nine nine zero W F L A. Don Richards standing by at the WFLA. You know what I mean, Bob. Well, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, sir. Right. You're, you're talking about other people interpreting what was said. I'm, I'm just telling you what's in there. Okay, I've, I've read it. I don't know I don't... if it's accurate or inaccurate. I kind of suspect that it's highly inaccurate. Okay. Well, why don't I try and uh, look this up and get into it a little bit more later? Oh, okay. But what about this, too, while you're on here? Go on. Uh, I was wondering if sometimes when you're, you know, quoting from the Bible uh-huh. or paraphrasing, whatever... Mm-hmm. If you could perhaps sometimes mention, for our benefit, what areas of the Bible or chapter and verse and so forth. Well, I, I was just, you know, never into what the Bible says in, you know, James 22, 7. I, it was just, yeah, that always, I'll leave that for the pros. Well, I, I wasn't trying to, you know, to get you to defend your point that way, but it would help us to, to come back at you with, you know, which I'm sure you don't want to help very much, but. Well, sir, 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 if you, if you believe in the book. And the inerrancy of the book, I would strongly recommend. As a matter of fact, I'd say I, it behooves you to study it and become much more familiar with it than you apparently are. Well, I am fairly familiar with it, but I certainly don't know every word in it, just like anyone else doesn't. I mean, for example, I don't come in here and say, I firmly believe what's written in uh, a book named XYZ if I'm not familiar with XYZ. I mean, I hope you got it silly for me to recommend XYZ. If I hadn't read it. But you could believe in a part that you had read, even if you hadn't read the whole book, couldn't you? Well, no, sir. That, that you know, I might have been taking something out of context. This is true. You know, I, I'm, that, it's a possibility that the book XYZ was written about those two pages being, you know, full of uh, donkey dong. I understand your point. And, and I just look at two pages, and it makes, you know, it makes it look like XYZ is saying donkey dong is true. But at the same time, anyone that reads any book will not be familiar with every sentence in it. Uh, you know, from memory. Yeah, except we're not talking about just any book. We're talking about a book that people say was from, A, from God, B, you know, it's, it's the book that tells you how to get to, to, to the promised land. Now, if I thought, sir, that there was a book that absolutely positively taught me how to get to the promised land and it was going to take care of me forever and ever and ever more and put me on the, you know, streets of gold and the pearly gates and the whole thing, if I thought that book was on the level, I promise you, sir, I'd damn near memorize it. Well, I have quite a bit of it memorized, but at the same time, you're still human. We're still going to have our human daily, day-to-day needs we well, have to exactly, take care of sir, that, Well, no, sir, that's my point. I am human, you see. I'm greedy and I'm selfish and I'm looking for shortcuts. We all are. If I thought that there was a book that would satisfy my greed, my selfishness, and give me shortcuts, I'd memorize it. Well, it will eventually, but it doesn't work instantly. I've got one more question. I'll let you go. Sure, what's that? Could you possibly... Give me what you consider to be human traits. Human traits? Human yes, characteristics? Are, yes, characteristics. The ability to think, the ability to communicate, the ability to love, uh, to show emotion, to deal in abstracts, to uh, be capable of compassion, to be uh, capable of uh, creating something, uh, of dissecting something, understanding something. These are all human characteristics. These are all things that other animals can't do. Okay. But does a newborn baby at one day old have those characteristics? Nope. So you're saying that a one day old baby is no more a human being than a fetus? Basically, yeah. What I'm saying but is. What if I'm you murder saying, a one day old baby, what if, I'm, if you kill a one day old baby. Excuse me, sir. What I'm saying is that both the fetus and the newborn infant are both seeds quite capable of growing into real live human beings, just as a, a seed for an oak tree is not an oak tree, but it's capable of growing into an oak tree. And well, it, it is an oak tree because it can't grow no, into I'm anything sorry. else. It's, I'm sorry, it's an oak tree. It does not have the ability. It's not an oak tree, sir. It's a potential oak tree. But it doesn't have the ability to become anything else, does That's it? That's right, sir. But it also doesn't necessarily mean it's going to become an oak tree. However, you bring up an interesting point about, you know, killing a one-day-old baby, killing a fetus. 
So well, what's, what's the difference? Well, sir, the, the difference is that we have, we have just kind of arbitrarily decided that once something is born, we will give it every, every opportunity. We will give to it the rights of the fully grown, the rights of the actual human beings. Once it is born, it's, an, it's basically an arbitrary situation. Mm -hmm. Just as it's an arbitrary situation that you can abort up to a certain point without uh, legal permission, but you can't abort beyond that certain point. Right. Uh, such either as, you know, it should the third be completely, trimester. or it either it should be no, that's not what I said at all. or not at all. No, that's not, that's not what I said at all, sir. No, I'm saying that's what I believe. I mean, yeah. it, I would think well, then, people then would then say then one way or the other. Murder. You know, because of what, who is capable of determining what point that fetus or you are newborn becomes? You are, a, sir. You, you just, you just basically concurred with me that it has no human characteristics. No, I, I think it has every human characteristic it is capable well, of having. One. It's capable of having that age, sir. That it has. I mean, obviously, a an acorn doesn't have the characteristics of an oak tree. Well, well, sir, name one characteristic that a newborn baby or a fetus has, especially the fetus. One human characteristic. Out of the ones you just named? Out of any you give okay, me a well, human characteristic. Okay, well, they feel. That is as much human they as anything. They feel. They feel what, sir? They have emotion. Uh, uh, no, they do not have emotion, sir. And besides, my dog feels, too. That's not a human characteristic. Okay. Well, the way you're defining it, then, at what age does a human characteristic, would he have to be four years old before he can become a human then, or three years old, or what age would that come into play then? Yes, sir, it's really different for all of us. That's why we, we have chosen an arbitrary point, and that point being birth. I thank you very much for the input. Well, thank you, Bob. Take care. Don Richards standing by with the WFLA News Brief. Oh. Yes. Uh, it's been very interesting listening to all these views on prayers, and I just mm -hmm. want to add that if it makes you feel better to pray, why well, you go right ahead. What bothers me is the people who believe in religion, such as the Christians and the Muslims, they want to make me pray their prayers. And I don't believe in prayers. You may have heard about there are no atheists in foxholes, and this is not a true statement because I am an atheist and I've been in foxholes, I've been in combat, and I just don't believe in prayer. I never did quite understand that uh, there are no atheists in foxholes. Uh, well, that's a, a little... Because, you know, like the last time we had a big war, there were 20, 30, 40, 50 million people yeah. who prayed to God to save them, and they you know, didn't... Uh, I wasn't make depending it. upon God to save me. I was depending upon myself. If you have a faith that God is going to interfere with it, you have no incentive to work the best you can to try to save yourself. Well, I don't know. I would have always thought that if there was, you know, this God that intervened in things, that there wouldn't have been wars. That's right. But if other people want to pray, well, I say, sure, it's okay with me. But what bothers me is they want to make me uh, say all that nonsense. Oh, I think you should be required to. It might work, sir. No, it hasn't worked in the past. Well, that's because it wasn't really organized, and everybody wasn't really required to do Believe it. So, so if it was organized and people were required to do it, then maybe we'd really get a good insight as to whether or not it worked. The, the Puritans had that brought down to a T. They had, uh, twice a day, they had to have prayers, and they sent around in forces to be sure everybody was in church. It didn't work. It never worked. I think it works. And you just you can rationalize any belief like that. Well, sir, again, I, I personally, you see, I, I think it's very wrong that we stop people from praying before football games. That would, uh, you know, when I really sit down and think about it, I think that if those people want to pray, that they should absolutely be encouraged to pray for victory. They should be encouraged to pray for, for everything and anything just so that they will look like the fools that they are. Just so, just so that we will not grow up another generation of people who actually think that God sits around wondering and, and favoring football teams. Yeah, but if they want to pray, that's fine. If they keep it to themselves. They had nobody stopping them from praying for themselves. But to force other people through um, intimidation to have to put up with it is not fair. Well, sir, I would love to be known. If, if there was one possible thing that I could be known for, it is the man that would make me happy it was the man that who finally convinced America that God does not favor the blue team over the red team. <laughs> well, you know, and God... it doesn't do any good to ask him to. Um, just remember that God answers every single prayer. The only trouble is the answer is usually no. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, thank Take you. Take care. Off it is now to... Uh, oh, let's make it Pinellas Park. There are always interesting calls. Hi, Pinellas. You're on there at 970 WFLA. Hello, Bob. Hi. It's not whoa. It's... <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, that's three times. Three times the young man has sat there during the course of this program, and three times, which, 
you know, I know a lot of you guys would really be hard on him and say, oh, you know, Lassiter, you should have dumped that out. But I am a compassionate man. I realize that this is an impotent young guy who will never have anything in his entire life and that the highlight of his life is running back to the radio hearing himself on the Lassiter show, which I can well understand. I mean, most people would love to be on the Lassiter show, and very few make it. Unfortunately, you know, nobody's ever going to remember anything he said, but have compassion. Look, he's just a little pimply-faced jerk, okay? He's got a bunch of friends that are morons and idiots, and they sit around and think this stuff is really neat. Now, I know that you've got your life together, and you don't need this kind of stuff. You don't need to call up and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. So have some compassion for this kid, huh? Because tomorrow he's going to be forgotten about, and he's going to spend the rest of his life in the gutter. Jeez, you guys are hard on people.